do you have to press to go live and record these episodes? It's quite entertaining. Hello and welcome just to family to giving you something to talk about or just a live TV as I like to call it. I'm your host, Melissa Kretschler. I'm an identity coach, spiritual teacher, business mentor, as well as creator and founder of not only just a live TV, but also the Women Supporting Women Can Network, which is a support group and a resource center for women globally. And it's all online. So go and uh, check that out. Today's sponsor is Love 360 Inc. They are offering you the ability to download or even book a free consultation. Now, the download is their three best crystals for combating gut health. And who doesn't want that? Because how many of us have gut pain or sorry, combating gut pain, which is even better. So go download that link in the description. Uh, Today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to and coping skills. I am exceptionally passionate about this. This is one of those passion topics that gets me angry because I don't think we talk about it enough. And if everybody knew what we were going to talk about on this episode, it would make their lives a whole hell of a lot easier. So to help me with that today is my guest speaker, Elizabeth DeFord. Elizabeth, would you like to introduce yourself? Thanks so much, Melissa. I'm grateful to be here on the show. Uh, I'm Elizabeth Duford with Love360, and I am a Reiki practitioner and crystal healer in North Carolina in the United States. Um, So I work primarily with women who are struggling with chronic pain, um, particularly gut pain, but other chronic pain as well. Um, And what we often find is that there is emotional pain underlying the physical pain. Um, so we try to release that so that they can live full, happy lives. Um, I do individual sessions as well as teaching workshops. And, um, I also sell bundles of crystals called peace pouches. Um, so those are just kind of crystals for setting specific intentions. And, um, I founded my business about a year ago during the pandemic. Um, so that's been an adventure and, um, yeah, I live with my husband and my four children and seven pets. So that's me. I think we're spirit sisters because I have four kids, a husband and six pets plus a ton of fish. So, um, I did have seven pets, but I unfortunately had to put my old girl down, uh, two years ago. So I'm sorry. Yeah. Other than that, um, gut health is super important. I know that I myself struggle with a lot of, um, gut issues. I have some conditions that cause my guts to be in an uproar. I'm on medication for the rest of my life. Thanks to my first child. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So gut health is fun. Um, I'm at the point with it, with it, where I've got it controlled, but I don't do anything out of the ordinary to kind of prevent it. And I should, right. because it's being worse. so, right. um, but off topic <laughs> for gut health, gut health is super important, but you are very right that gut health is a lot of the times, um, a sign of something else, a sign of something that maybe is not aligned or not feeling well people don't realize that a lot of your emotional health, when you don't understand or you don't have the coping skills or you don't have the mechanisms or the self-soothing to control or, or soothe your emotional health, that will actually impact your energy. It'll impact your mentality. It'll impact your physical being, your spiritual being, your energetic being, all of that. So um, coping skills are very, very important um and and it does your your physical body will show signs when you aren't you know taking care of your emotional well-being so absolutely what's your biggest pet peeve because we're going to get into pet peeves really quickly (laughs) what are your biggest pet peeves on coping skills um well I think a big one for me is that people assume that we're just sort of born with coping skills you know (laughs) that um we have some innate a uh, sense of how to cope with stress, overwhelm, uh, big feelings, uh, traumatic events, and especially that we expect children to be able to do that, um, I think is, is a real, that is a real pet peeve of mine. Uh, I think plenty of adults don't have coping skills because they've never learned them and that yet we expect young children to really roll with the punches and um, not uh, you know, not freak out when things are hard. And, um, I think that's kind of an unreasonable expectation when we're not modeling or we're not teaching 
Um, things like self-soothing that are so important to, you know, getting through um, things that are challenging. So that's probably my biggest pet peeve around coping skills is that misconception. Absolutely. I, I get so angry and I'm not angry at people. I'm, I'm angry at the situations that have created the lack of coping skills, right? The situations that we find ourselves in. Now I've, I, I don't know how many people watching or catching a replay have heard me talk about the positivity movement. I absolutely cannot stand the positivity movement. I think it's more negative than it is positive because what we do is we end up bypassing, right? We gaslight our own our own emotions. We gaslight right. what we're feeling, what we're supposed to feel. Now, you talked about children and expecting children to learn. So I did our very first episode on the show. I did with my 19-year-old son. And he was actually the reason that I realized that we weren't teaching our kids coping skills. We weren't teaching them emotional health and emotional well-being, self-soothing. And he showed that as he got older. So this is something that I have absolute and utter detail in because I've experienced it. Because right. I've seen firsthand not only how it affects my husband, my, my son, my, all my children, right? And my right. friends and family. Coping skills is one of the most important things we need for emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual well-being, but yes. none of us are teaching it. So I'm teaching it. Right. And you're teaching. And it's it's vital. And so um, if anybody wants to catch that replay of that episode, that is the very first episode we did. You can only find that episode on Facebook and YouTube. If you scroll back to our very first episode, that's where you will find the episode I did with my with my oldest. No, oh, I definitely uh, want to check that out. Yeah. Um, he ended up cutting. He ended up turning into drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, even now he is um, emotionally stunted and he knows that. So he's working on that mm -hmm. um, high anxiety. And he's allowed me because he, we did share this in the first video. Um, but he's experienced all of that. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to his girlfriend actually today. And she said, he never talks about his emotions. And I said, I know, like, he's very closed off emotionally. Now, my, my brother was like that as well. There was no conversation about emotions unless he got angry, right? The only emotion he would show is anger. Right. And there was never any peace or happiness. It was always the anger emotion, right? right. Um, so I have a lot of pet peeves when it comes to coping skills. Um, I'm going to just throw some out there and we can just jump with them. So one yeah. of them being men and coping. So <laughs> as boys, when you've got men and women, women, men and women alike, hear me roar for a minute. How many of you have known or engaged with a man who their only emotion that they show is anger? How many of you have engaged with that? Hands up, hands up, post it in the comments, you know, tag, tag us, whatever. If you're watching the replay, how many men and women have engaged with a partner, a parent, a sibling, whose only emotion that they show is anger? Where do you think that stems from? I know where that stems from. And that is emotions are for sissies, crying are for girls. Mm -hmm. Um, you need to man up, grow some balls, whatever that men have been conditioned from children to not show emotion or it is a weakness. Now yeah. you think about it. Number one, that doesn't show coping skills. Number two, and sorry, as you can see, I get very agitated at this, at this topic. <laughs> I understand. Number two, Number two, so number one, you get no emotions. There's no coping skills there. So one, they don't know how to show emotion. Number two, they don't know how to discuss emotion. Number three, they don't process emotion, cope with emotion, or deal with emotion because they're not supposed to. And then you get this person and women, women especially, men and women, if you are in touch with the emotional side of yourself, you know that when you're feeling emotional, that builds up. If you don't release those emotions, they build up. Where do you think that anger comes from? Where do you think that anger comes from? 
where do you think abusive controlling partners come from? It comes from people who don't know how to control their emotions, find an outlet that actually makes them feel like they're in control. Right. And they react. That is a lack of coping skills, a lack of understanding of what emotions are, how to cope with them, how to process them, how to engage with them, and how to express them. Absolutely. All of those things. It is. And, you know, my observation too is, as you say, like for men, I think they're also so much less likely to seek help um, when they are struggling. Um, And so that's another layer of, you know, well, it's somehow weak to ask for help. It's somehow, you know, not okay to be in therapy or to, you know, explore other modalities that might help you when you're struggling. Um, I mean, a lot of men won't even go to the regular doctor, you know, to get checkups, like they don't take care of themselves and they resist um, exploring what it is that might be making them so angry. Like what's underneath that? Because I think for most people underneath anger, there's usually a lot of sadness and fear and anger is just the easiest emotion to express. It's the most socially acceptable, right? Especially for men. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. I just realized my daughter went behind my computer. So it was like facing the wrong way. Um, so I needed to kind of adjust it a little bit so that it was facing the right way. And I feel better. I look better now. Well, (laughs) I think I do. You looked Um, good before. (laughs) Why? Thank you. Um, it is emotions. Emotions are so hugely important and we don't focus on that enough. And we don't allow everybody to feel okay to actually ask for help okay to not be weak in the moment and not be weak just because you need somebody to show you how right and I'm going to I'm going to call everybody I'm going to call you out on this not you but but to the people watching I'm gonna call you out on this and I'm not I'm not saying to blame parents that's not what I'm saying right it's but as children It is our parents' responsibility to teach us how to be functioning human beings. That is the job of a parent, to unconditionally love you, to help you grow, to help you through life's up and downs, and to teach you the skills that you need. How many parents teach their children how to walk, how to talk, how to cook, how to clean, how to, you know, work hard, how to have, you know, values and ethics and religion or whatever it is that you're teaching your kids. Mm -hmm. parents should be teaching their children as well how to cope right and we're not and I was guilty of that too absolutely and it's not even a guilt thing I didn't do that I didn't teach my oldest son how to cope and he paid the consequences for that right Right. and so uh, any adult that's watching or any person that's watching we learn how to cope as children, right? We did an episode the other day on dissociation, right? If we don't know how to cope with what's going on or we don't have the control or the power to stop or, or process what's happening, you know, we, we lose, we go to another place. We don't, you know, in, in cases of severe trauma, dissociation is created, Right. Exactly. Where we don't have the mental capacity to cre- to protect ourselves in that moment. So we either bring in and call in or create another ego or another um, identity to do it for us. Exactly. Right. So, again, it's oh, like I said, coping skills is another one. Um, so that's my other pet peeve is that we're not teaching it now again no blame no shame no guilt i've been there done that i'm I'm talking from experience as a parent yeah you look at yourself and this is the this is the next part look at yourself as an adult as a human being how do you cope how do you cope as an adult how do you cope how'd you learn that right right? You learned that through your own experiences, through your own growth. And yes, absolutely. We do. 
Mm-hmm. Right. I learned how to cope by having to cope. Right. I had no other choice. Right. But right. if we know how to cope and we're coming into an age of growth, empowerment, positivity, self-development, healing, if we're coming into all of this, right, why aren't we teaching our children how to do this? Right. Right. So um, I'm, I'm going to shamelessly promote this, but I am creating a program for parents on how to teach your children coping skills, starting with yourself. That's wonderful. So needed. So needed. Yep. I'm hoping to have it in schools as well so that, you know, whether it's a training or a class or a presentation that's done so yep. that children can kind of get that hey, you know, <laughs> it's, it's okay being me. Let's, let's figure it out because it's not just coping skills. It's identity. If you don't know, and it's so my next pit pet peeve, and then I'm going to give it to you to talk because I'm sure. monopolizing. It's okay. <laughs> my next pet peeve is your coping skills, your abilities, your strength and your gifts and your, uh, you know, capabilities of healing yourself and processing those come down to your own unique identity. Not everybody processes, not everybody copes the same way. It is an identity issue. Your mental health, your physical health, your emotional, spiritual, energetic health comes down. I can teach you how to do everything that I do, but it's not going to work for you. You, ha- I have to teach you what works for you. Right. Right. That's the point of guides. That's the point of coaches, the point of mentors and healers. If Reiki, right? I yep. need to teach you what works for you, not what works works for me, right. right? Kids are the same way. Everybody uniquely learns a different way. How many people learn by being hands-on? How many right. people learn by oral, uh, visual, right? We all have different learning styles, yet you have schools that are teaching things all the same way. You yeah. have churches that are teaching things all the same way. You've got spiritual bypassing, right? You've got the positivity movement. You've got cancel culture. You've got everybody trying to be like everybody else and it's not working. Right. Coping skills are the same. Right. No, 100%. I agree with you. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's I mean, the world is so, I feel like, right now, especially we're observing sort of this mass lack of coping skills, (laughs) um, in the, on the planet. Um, and, you know, I think as a healer, that's something I think about a lot is, you know, I think with each person that works on healing themselves in their own unique way, um, the more we can put out healing energy to the world. And so again, we're never going to get to that healed place if we don't have the coping skills to do it. So it becomes a vicious cycle where we just stay unhealed. And then, you know, we're putting out these negative, this negative energy because we don't know what, we don't have other options. We don't have other choices where we are walking around with our wounds, wherever they are, uh, physical, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, and projecting them onto others. And, um, and it's not our fault. It's just that again, the learning and the skills were not taught to us. So we stay stuck. Yep. And it does manifest. So, you know, your specialty is, is, you know, physical healing, gut health, all right. of that. Right. And right. it does physically manifest. That's the thing. It's, you know, it's not just I think everything manifests a different way, but everything does manifest, right? Like you, uh, yesterday I did a rant on the law of attraction and um, I'm not wholly against the law of attraction, but I think that it's, it's a lot more detailed and a lot more specific than people make it out to be. It's not just this easy thing, right. To, to be like, Oh, I said it. So it's going to happen. It's like, no, it's the intention behind it. It's, you know, it's, it's the thought processes. It's your belief on whether or not you actually believe it's going to happen. It's the physical activities and actions and decisions you take. Exactly actually- the actions. There's still work to like, be done. There's still exactly. work to be done. Coping yeah. skills are the same. 
right? It's, it's right. trial and error. Life is trial and error. It's ups and downs. It's curveballs. It's trying to figure out whether you've got a slow pitch or a fast pitch. It's, right. you know, are you going to touch down today? I'm using all these, you know, sports analogies, but no, but sometimes know, sports analogies are the best. So <laughs> they are. It's this winding road that leads to nowhere yet leads to everywhere. That's life. Absolutely. Right? It is. I'm getting a tattoo. Actually, I'm getting a few. I have a few, but I'm getting a few more. Uh, and I was talking to my husband about it the other day. And he's like, why that one? And I, so I want, um, I'm not going to go into super detail, but I want the Cheshire cat. So no, if I- anybody knows Alice in Wonderland, right? I want the Cheshire cat. And I, he says, why do you like Alice in Wonderland so much? And I said, I love, you know, I never realized until recently just how much I loved Alice in Wonderland. And it wasn't because, you know, I loved all Disney movies. The majority of Disney movies I loved, even though they had horrible, horrible lessons. <laughs> um, I have loved Disney movies. And So Alice in Wonderland has a special place in my heart because I am a unique thinker. I am an out of the box thinker. Mm -hmm. So it it calls to me. And right. That makes sense. Out of of every character in that movie, it's the Cheshire cat. He makes absolutely no sense, but he makes the most sense. Right. right? It's like Absalom as well. Absalom. I I want Absalom too, because he's just wise and crazy, Um, which is like me, but you think of all of the greatest geniuses in the world, all of them, they started somewhere. They didn't start as geniuses. They were always, yes, they were always geniuses, but people called them crazy. They called their ideas out of whack. I told my husband, we need a Melissa nation. I need to become like the empress of the world and just make all (laughs) these changes, right? Because I get the logistics behind it. I get I'm like the Cheshire cat, right? He says, and my favorite quote that he said is, um, she's like, can you tell me which way to go? And he says, well, where are you trying to get to? Like, Mm -hmm. where are you trying to get to? And she goes, well, it doesn't matter. And he goes, then why does it matter which way you go? Right. Right. And life is like that. the, The destination of life is death. That's, that's, yes. that's the ultimate destination, how you get there and what you do between now and then none of that matters unless you make it matter. Right. 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 You have that choice. And so the logic for me is, you know, we, we go through, we already go through enough emotional trauma, enough stress, enough we beat ourselves up. Other people beat us up. We're, you know, the life bus is going to come by and hit us about 15 or 20 times in, you know, the first 30 years, you're constantly going to have those ups and downs, right? Yes. Why not have the tools at your disposal to help yourself through that? We're not supposed to get stuck. Yeah. Okay. Maybe for a day or two, maybe for a month or a week or, you know, in really traumatic events, absolutely. We do get stuck. But you have, if you have coping skills, those little moments, you're not going to get stuck. Right. You're going to know gonna how to move like, forward. Okay. I feel like shit. <laughs> like, you know, I, I feel like hell. I'm trying to go through stuff. I'm, you know, I feel like I look like crap today. Now I'm talking about myself, right? I feel like I look like crap today and yesterday. I don't care. I'm still showing up. Um, I still smiling. I'm still, you know, here so that you can see me. And yet I, I, you know, it's the up and down. Right. And it's okay. I let myself feel that up and down. The positivity movement has done more damage as a society than just about any other movement we've had. Yeah. And it's all because it tells us to bypass bypassing keeps you where you are. You might think you're moving forward, but whatever it is that you're bypassing, whatever that you're pushing aside or shoving down, that is going to still be there. And the crash and burn is going to be worse because you've ignored it. Right. Well, and I think, I mean, I think what you said about, it's basically telling you to gaslight yourself about your emotions and your experiences, um, is really is right on. Um, you know, I think that 
<laughs> we, when we are forcing ourselves to ignore the things that are real, um, our real feelings, our, our real experiences of the world, um, that's, that, that's really dangerous. You know, it's really emotionally dangerous. Um, and so even though I will admit having getting, having gotten sucked into positivity stuff in the past, it's something I really also find problematic. Um, especially as a healer, because in the healing community, there can be a lot of that. Um, and I really, I really try to, um, you know, be balanced in my approach to talking about positive energy and what does that really mean? Um, you know, does it mean ignoring our emotions? Oh. No. <laughs> I'll give you the best example of just how toxic the positivity movement is. Okay. So I started coaching six years ago. Mm. And when I started coaching, it was because I saw what was happening with my son. I saw what was happening with other kids his age. And I saw the, the devastation and trauma, the lack of coping skills, the emotional right. well-being and health, right? And so I always point out the negativity because the art, okay, and I coined this phrase many moons ago, um, negativity is the catalyst to positive growth. It is a springboard, right? Your negativity is what helps you move forward. Right. So I would be like, let the negativity out, let it out. Now, this was at the height and, and the beginning of the positivity movement. Now, the positivity movement is supposed to be all love and light. Right. If, if something doesn't work for you, you let it go. If something like the, the concept behind it was okay. Yes. The way to go about it went to when it's like the feminist movement, the feminist movement, the actual ideal behind the feminist movement was feminine equality. It was equality for women, right? It was freedom for women. Now it's become domination where, you know, the positivity movement is exactly the same. It is now about domination. So I was coming up in that time, I was, you know, people were hearing me talk about, you know, negativity and positivity and how to create more positivity using the negativity, all of this, right? And I would get messages, I would get blocked, I would get messages, like hate messages about how, oh, you're too negative. And why is it that the positivity movement community was attacking me for speaking my truth? Right. Doesn't that seem like the opposite of what it should be doing? <laughs> yeah. Spiritual mentors. I'm a spiritual teacher. Spiritual mentors who are telling you it has to be this way. You have to do it this way. And not acknowledging or validating your beliefs as your own. Right. Not okay. Right. Right. When you become, when you get to a certain level and, and I'm, I'm at this level, I, I, I'm, I'm almost surpassed this level now, is I love everybody unconditionally. I can see anybody on the street and have unconditional love for them. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I like them, doesn't mean I like their behavior. It doesn't mean I, you know, will um, encourage their behavior if they're doing something that I, I don't believe is right, but I do not judge them for it. I do not persecute them for it. I do not push them away for it. Mm -hmm. Now I get to choose who's in my life and who isn't in my life, but I do it with love. Right. I don't say you do this. So I don't like you. I'm going to shut you off. No, I have had friends who have been very negative or have triggered negative feelings within me. Mm -hmm. And I say, you know what? I love you and I value our friendship, but it's not working for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not okay in this yeah. relationship anymore. I'm not okay. I can't stop being triggered by this or triggered by that. I'm not putting it on you, but I need to do what's best for me. And it's not fair to you if, if, if I'm being triggered all the time. Right. Right. And you, you're not, we put blame on so many different people for our triggers. That's yes, not do. coping skills, right? Coping yeah. skills are understanding that the way I feel my emotional health and well being my, you know, mental health and well-being are completely my own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's our responsibility to take care of ourselves, um, especially 
if we are in a role, for example, as coaches or healers or therapists, you know, mentors, guides, um, you know, if we're not walking the walk, um, it's pretty hard to, um, you know, give everything that it takes to um, lead others down a path of health if we're not making those choices for ourselves. Um, so. So back to coping skills, yeah. <laughs> how to coping skills. So number one thing with coping skills, and I'm going to, I'll lay out my process and, and we can back and forth the process of, sure. of how to actually cope. Um, number one is understanding that whatever it is you're feeling, whether it's good, bad, ugly, whatever, negative, positive, it doesn't matter. You should be feeling all of it. Yeah. That's my number one coping is about feeling it yeah and that's that doesn't mean you stay in that place no. but even just acknowledging um again when the positivity movement came out and I was noticing all of the drama from it I created the embrace your positivity guide and again number one is acknowledgement right mm -hmm. you have to acknowledge how you're feeling Right. It doesn't mean you have to hold on to it and keep it or push it aside. It's, hey, I'm feeling this way right now, right this moment, today, this, this is where my emotions are. This is what I'm feeling. This, this is, this is how I'm doing. Right. Right. I agree. And I think, you know, if we don't name our emotions and if we don't allow ourselves to notice them and acknowledge them, um, you know, then they're just getting stuffed down. and then we hold them, you know, in our hearts, in our souls, in our bodies. Um, and that is where we stumble and where we get stuck. Um, because you can't release an emotion. You can't move through it if it's not named. And, you know, what I talk a lot about with people I work with is, you know, where do you feel that emotion in your body? Like that's one way of noticing our emotions, right? Is like, what does our body do when we're feeling a certain way? Like, do we clench our fists? You know, do we sweat? Does our throat feel tight? Just even noticing those physical sensations that are associated with our emotions helps us identify them. Um, and you know, it's, and that all our emotions are okay. It doesn't mean it's okay to act on all of them, but like feelings are just feelings. There's nothing wrong with a feeling. It's the behavior that can go along with some of the feelings. That's the problem. Um, yeah. And I think sometimes, especially as you were saying with the positivity movement, it's almost like there's a judgment around even having an emotion that's considered negative, you know, like you can't ever be angry or you can't ever be sad or disappointed or frustrated. And when those are all normal human emotions. Um, so I think, you know, again, and it's something <clears throat> I've tried to teach my kids is that there's no bad feeling you know, that's, that's a judgment. Um, try not to judge yourself for your feelings. You know, we, we make choices about how we express our feelings, but just having them is part of being human. So. Yep. Yep. Um, the other day I was cranky. <laughs> and I walked into my daughter's room because I was, you know, borderline taking, you know, borderline taking it out on others. And I, and I do my very best not to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I walked into her room and I said, this is pissing me off. She goes, mom, you're cranky. Mm -hmm. Don't take it out on me. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. I said, but please do as I'm asking. you." Mm -hmm. And I, and I walked away because that's what I've taught her. Right. That's, right. I, I've mimicked that behavior or I've, I've walked that behavior. I've talked my talk and right. walk my walk with her right. so that she now, she now gets it. Right. Right. And I'm teaching my soon to be 13 year old daughter that it's okay to feel whatever it is that you're feeling. It is absolutely okay. And I will respect, you can be angry with me. You can feel hatred towards me. I'm good with all of it because it's how you feel. Right. I said, the difference is, is whether or not you take it out on me. Right. Because what people don't understand is that the way you're feeling, 
the way your emotions are playing out are directly related to your own mindset. Yes. Your brain is telling you that you need to react with this emotion. Right. My action isn't telling you to react with a certain emotion. It's your brain that's telling you to do that. Right. Right. So when they say, oh, this person triggered me. No. What I said may have triggered a reaction in you, but that is not my creation. Now, if I turn around and I call you a bad name and my intention is to hurt you, absolutely, I deserve the reaction. Right. Absolutely. That's different. Right? Yeah. But that's an intentional behavior, right? That's right. an intentional trigger. Now, a lot of the world's fights and, and miscommunications and failures in relationships of all t- different types and, and sorts come down to that miscommunication of was that my intention or right. was that your trigger? Right. Right. This is why I need to be the empress of the world because <laughs> I know that stuff. Um, but it's, it's interesting. So coping is knowing that number one, your emotions are your own, yep. regardless of what situation is creating those emotions. Your brain is telling you that those emotions are yours. Yes. Absolutely. Right? So embrace them. Be like, okay. Right. If you're feeling a negative way or you're reacting. So the difference between feeling feelings and emotions Feelings is something you actually feel. Emotion is something that your brain is telling you to feel. Sure. Right. So your emotions are reactions, right? Um, When you, when something happens or something said, you have an emotional reaction to it. It's knee jerk. It's instinctual. It's knee jerk. Right. And that's because your brain instinctually says, Hey, that was not okay. Right. Um, But then when you start to take that emotion, right, and go, okay, I'm feeling this way, Mm -hmm. doesn't feel very good. What's causing this feeling? Is it my brain? Is it an intentional action? What's going on? And you start to think about that emotion. When you start to think about whatever it is that you're feeling, you you start releasing that feeling because you're processing it. Exactly. Right? You're processing. So now in the heat of the moment, if you are very highly emotional in the moment, you need to find ways to calm your emotions. That doesn't mean remove them. It means calm them, right? right. Your body needs to relax. Your mind needs to relax and your emotions need to relax. There are many, many different ways to do this, but you need to express that emotion in one, one way or another. You think about a geyser, Right. You think about a geyser or a volcano or even something that's plugged, right? That pressure builds and it builds and it builds. It has to have somewhere to go. Our emotions are energy. So they have to have somewhere to go. So finding something that works for you to express that emotion so that it's not overwhelming your brain. Right. Cause that's when we take those, those not so good actions. Right. Right. So getting into that emotion and saying, okay, I feel this way. I acknowledge that I feel this way. Now I'm going to take the moment and I'm going to relax. Right. So whether that is art therapy, music, whether it's a punching bag, whether it's taking a long run, whatever that looks like, figure out how you can relax for anybody watching. If you don't know how, We can help you find out how one of the quickest ways to relax your body. Meditation is not about clearing your mind. It's about clearing your emotions and relaxing your body. That is meditation. That is the truest purpose of meditation. Your thoughts will still come through. Um, Do the 15 second breathing technique. Inhale for five, hold for five, exhale for five you have to do it repeatedly then do so I find that doing it even once if you do it relaxes your whole body and you're like okay yeah that's when you start to think what's causing it yeah breathing techniques can be amazing for bringing ourselves down when we are really um when we are triggered when we feel our emotions escalating when we start to feel out of control 
Um, the 15 second breathing technique that you mentioned is one that I often suggest um, to clients um, because again, a lot of people are coming with, you know, whether it's physical or emotional pain, it's things that are spurring a lot of high emotion. You know, being in chronic pain is, you know, it leads to a lot of depression. It can lead to anger. It can lead to withdrawal. Um, it can lead to all sorts of, you know, negative feelings about the self because it's like, why isn't my body working? Um, so, you know, and that can then cause, you know, the sense of panic, like I'm never going to feel better. And then you get into that cycle. Um, so things like breathing techniques, um, I really like a meditation called the body scan. You might've heard of it, but where you basically just start at the top of your head and just breathe into each part of your body, going all the way down to your feet so that you make sure that you're, you're in your body. Um, sometimes when we're experiencing really high emotions, we are almost dissociated from our bodies. Um, it's like we're out here um, and we're not grounded. And so, um, you know, I think breathing and, and really making sure that we are present in our bodies is one way to combat that, um, those really high emotions that can cause us to make choices that are just not in our best interest or in the best interest of the people around us. Yep. Um, just for everybody watching or catching the replay, grounding does not mean in the ground. Grounding <laughs> right. is actually a technique to bring yourself back into the moment. It's not connecting to the earth. It's not getting out of your own head. It is bringing you back into the now and the physical moment that you are sitting in. Um, it, uh, there's a lot of miscommunication. Um, I did an entire um, podcast series on that a while ago <laughs> on the spiritual myths, busting spiritual myths, because I was just like, no, this isn't okay. Um, Grounding is literally just bringing yourself back into the moment so that you're here, you're in your body, you're not thinking about your past, your future, you're in the present moment. Um, and that is quite unemotional when you're sitting in the here and now, it can be quite healing because you're not focused on the what ifs, you're not focused right. on the what happened, right? You're right. focused on right here, right now. Exactly. It's just Super being present, being present. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah. Grounding is super important, super important for our, again, our health on all levels, mental, physical, spiritual, all of it. Yep. Figuring out how um, to stuck in the past or present. Well, and that's why some people fidget or yep. rock back and forth or shake or, you know, um, if you have crystals, because uh, I know you and I both have crystals. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, if you have crystals, and I'm just going to take one quickly out of my little um, pouch here, but when you have crystals, you can, because I'm a, I'm a crystal, certified crystal practitioner um, as well. <laughs> so oh, that's I wonderful. love my crystals. Yay, connection. <laughs> um, all of my big ones are, aren't in here, so I'm going to take one of the smaller ones. This is citrine. Um, for love watching, citrine. Yep. Um, I have a little money one in an owl pyramid um, that I keep by my desk all the time. It's got pyrite, citrine, green adventuring, rose quartz, and um, of course, uh, clear quartz. Right. Got to got to put that clear quartz in there. Amplify yep. everything. Amplify everything. So, um, for anybody watching, um, taking a crystal or even a rock or anything that you have around that's handy. And just playing with it, uh, running it through your fingers, feeling its texture, uh, looking at it and seeing how it reflects or the specs that they have in them. Because every crystal has a different shape, different yeah. outline, different unique um, characteristics in it that, you know, I, I make. So I make crystal jewelry. That's my local business, one of the six. Um and it's, you know, having a mala or a bracelet or a necklace. I yep. even make anklets out of crystal jewelry. Yep. And it's, you know, take it and play with it. That's why rosaries and malas and necklaces are so good because yep. you play with them. You can play with right? them. Yeah. And it's bringing your focus back onto that. People have said food, uh, which is not a good one. 
do not replace, do not use food to ground yourself. It's not a good idea. Um, that, that will be for sure weight gain. Uh, <laughs> but right. using, right? Twirling your hair, doing um, coloring coloring book and there's tons of adult color yourself one of those but um yeah. doing something in the moment right so find out whatever it is that that you that you enjoy and even if it is something that you used to do as a kid right coloring I love coloring when my daughter was diagnosed with diabetes we spent a week in the hospital mm-hmm. and I brought coloring books and pencil crayons and, right and, and I spent all of my free time in the hospital coloring Right. It's, it's very calming. I mean, I find it. So anyway, it's soothing to color. Um, and it is a, it can be a grounding technique because it is, you have to be present to color. Um, you can't do anything else while you're coloring. Um, it can even be a form of meditation. So for me, um, as a spiritual teacher, I teach that meditation again, isn't clearing your mind it is relaxing your body and your emotions. When you relax your body and emotions, you ground yourself automatically. Not only that, you're, cap- you're able to see things a lot clearer, right? Yeah. So meditation is just a relaxation. Um, and you can do, you can play with a crystal and relax yourself. It's putting your focus into something or anything, driving in my car, whatever it is that relaxes you is a meditation, having a shower, um, right. sitting in a hot tub, swimming in a pool, whatever that may look like for you. Right. Those are, those are coping skills right there. Being right. able to bring yourself off the emotional ledge. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, having something in our hands, as you were saying, whether it's a fidget or a crystal, <laughs> I have one of my big crystals. This is, um, a, it's an angel aura and it's a tree agate, which is one of my favorite stones. Um, it's an earth, it's an earth element stone. Um, it's, it is very, it does connect us to the earth. Um, and it is a very positive stone, um, a heart chakra stone because it's green. Um, so I love it. And I love a sphere as a shape and just holding one in my hand because it's got that weight to it. Um, it always feels again, really comforting. And I sort of, you know, I'll go back and forth sometimes with the sphere. Um, and spheres are cool because they, as you probably know, Melissa, they, they radiate energy 360 degrees, which is actually part of why I named my business love 360, because the crystal, the sphere is the most powerful shape in crystal healing because of its radiating energy. And I like the idea of sending out love 360 degrees to everyone all around us and all around the world. I love that. So I love that. Um, okay. So we touched on coping skills, how to coping skills. We touched on meditation. We touched on grounding, um, acknowledging how you're feeling, no matter what it is. Um, do you are always in control? And I think not enough people understand that. So when you're emotionally overwhelmed, you feel like you're not in control. Um, I'm going to do this and I apologize. I'm I'm hosting the Empowered Warrior Women's Challenge. It's a five free day, five challenge, a free five day challenge. And it's all about the five ways you're giving away your control every day. Um, so if anybody's interested in learning how to take back your control um, and your power, you can go do that in that. It's in, in links in our other episodes. Um, and I didn't link it today. But I wanted to mention that because that is so important for feeling like you're coping with something is feeling like you're in control. We forget that we have control. We forget that we are always connected to ourselves, to our power, to our confidence. We just don't feel like it. And that is a mental thing. So learning how you are in control, remembering that you're always in control and saying, I'm in control of not only how I feel, how I act, how I express, I'm in control But even just saying I'm in control of this moment. Right. And even if that's the only thing you feel in control of, even if it's just this second, that is still, you're still in control of this moment. And then you just have to make it to the next moment. And then you can be in control of that moment. And it's just little by little by little. Yep, exactly. 
Um, and that's, that's powerful in itself. So make sure that you're looking into that, right? You're in control in this moment. Um, I have to write that down, actually. <laughs> One of those things I just have to write down. Um, I'll do a post about that <laughs> later. All right. Um, another coping skill. So once you figure out what it is that you're feeling, start to ask yourself, and you don't need to go deep. Again, you're in control. You're in control of that moment. You don't have to go in deep. You don't have to go in overwhelmed. Just ask yourself, you know, why am I, why am I triggered? What's triggering me? What's triggering right. this emotion? Right. Um, and you don't have to have the solution right away. Just even right. just asking yourself what the trigger is, right? You, there is a lesson in that. And not enough, not, not many people understand that when you're feeling negativity or you're feeling out of control, or you're feeling really emotional, there is a lesson in that of something that needs to change, whether it be a situation, whether it be a limiting belief, whether it be, you know, whatever it looks like, there's something that needs to change. Our negativity shows us that something needs to change, right? Yeah. Big, small, whatever it is. Um, and, and usually something that's not working for us. Right. Right. Absolutely. So shying away, right? Shying away from those emotions because they're negative. You're not going to learn how to do something that's better for you. Exactly. And then again, you're just going to be recycling the same patterns. Um, which have gotten you where you are in the first place. So, um, exactly. and yeah, I think the more that we look away from our emotions and the more that we pretend that we're not feeling them or the more that we shove them down or the more that we try to blame others for our emotions, whatever it is that we're doing to try to shove them away, um, you know, the more they're just going to keep coming back up. I mean, there's, you're never going to release an emotion until you name it. Right. And so um, there's power in the naming. Like that's the, as you said earlier, it's the beginning of letting it go is just to name it. Yeah, exactly. Um, next step, get help. Not all of us, it, it's not easy to understand what those lessons are. It's not easy to learn coping when you've been not coping for years. It can feel overwhelming, right. it can feel scary. Right. You can do more damage than good if you don't have somebody holding your hand through that experience and you are not weak, you are not out of control, you're just lost in yourself and in those emotions, it is, it's okay, it's okay. It is, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with asking for help, and believe me that those of us who are in helping professions, we've all asked for help, you know, I didn't just, you know, appear knowing how to be a healer or being a healed person myself. Not that I, I think we're never completely healed. A lot of the time it's a process, right? It's a journey, but you know, you, we've all had to ask for help to get where we are. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of, it's actually, I think very brave and courageous to ask for help. It's one of the bravest things people can do. Um, there's absolutely nothing weak about it. It is. Um, to all the parents watching, teach your kids how to cope. Let them find their own variation of expression. Let them find their own identity. Just guide them through with unconditional love and understanding they're going to make mistakes. They're going to need help, but they're going to need to learn how to do it their way. That's right. Give them that space. Yes, please do, because... Projecting what's worked for you onto your kids, um, that's just putting them in a box and they're going to need a whole different recipe um, than what you needed for yourself. Um, yeah. So helping them find what that recipe is, is, is vital to their, their well-being. Yep. And it's funny, I had this conversation the other day and I think it's relevant to today is we can't expect our children to do something we're not willing to do. And we can, you know, I, I remember, you know, telling my daughter, you know, mom, I need something. And I'm like, not right now. I, it's, you know, it's me time right now. 
just give me a little bit, talk to me in an hour. And then if I ask her to do something, it's like, no, you do it now. Right. She's like, Mom, can I have time though? Right. We have to remember that they are individuals. They are deserving of respect, of understanding, of unconditional love, of, you know, the freedom to make their own choices with guidance. Exactly. Right. If you, my kids, like I said, at 18 and 19, going on 20, and, you know, I tell them, like, I'm going to love you regardless of what you choose to do. Here are the solutions. Here are your options. Here's what's going to happen if you pick these options, your choice. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think remembering that our children are our are, are people. Right. Your choice. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And biggest thing is if you suck at coping and if you don't know how to cope, if you have, you know, how many... And I hate to say this and back up and just forget that I said that first part is how many of our children feel like their only option is to end. That is a huge lack of emotional awareness Mm -hmm. of coping skills, of processing, of feeling like they have any way out but that that's right that's right and it's so tragic I mean that any child feels that unable to see other options you know what and I I'm not there's no shame there's no blame there's no guilt or judgment there are children who have amazing parents who unconditionally love them and they know that they're unconditionally loved and everything else. And yet they still, they're either embarrassed or they're disappointed in themselves and can't bear to see you upset or, or unloving. And one of the biggest things we can teach our children is no matter what you do, I will love you. I may not like you. (laughs) I may not like your choices, but I will always love you. And I will always be here for you. And nothing you say will turn me away from being your parent. That's right. No, I've always told my kids, there is nothing you could do or say that would make me stop loving you. Nothing. You know? Yes, I may not like you all the time. We may not get along all the time. But I will always be your mom. And there's always place in my heart for you. Um, And, you know, just keeping that connection strong is so important. And I think it makes us a safe place for our kids to express their emotions when they know that they're loved unconditionally. Yep. Yep. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to add about coping skills before we get going? Just that Again, I just want to reiterate, there's absolutely no shame in asking for help. I just really want to boost that. I think that, you know, and there's lots of different ways to get help. Um, you know, there's traditional therapies, there's non-traditional therapies, um, there's lots out there. So, um, you'll find something that works for you. Yep. There's people like us (laughs) who can help you in different ways in various different ways, right? You can go the spiritual route, you can go the, you know, life coaching, identity coaching, uh, whatever it is that you're looking for is find somebody who works for you. Find yeah. somebody who vibes with you, who's not going to judge you, who's going to help you, not just with the surface level stuff, right? but uncovering what, what the, what the true issues are going on underneath that surface level, right? You look at an iceberg, um the iceberg method right where all you see is the tip of the iceberg you don't see what's happening underneath the water that's right yeah we got to look underneath the water to uh start the healing process and it's not as hard as you may think it's right um I want to say that if you've got trauma that you're holding on to, if you're feeling a lack of coping skills and you're terrified of, of going back and looking at what, um, looking back at what's happened, 
it's not as scary because you are in control. You're not reliving or replaying your trauma. You're understanding how it works for you. That's right. That's right. Right. You don't ever have to go back. Uh, Yep. All right. Well, thank you for joining me today, Elizabeth. I really appreciated it. Um, Thank you for anybody watching me. Absolutely. For anybody watching, if you would like to download Elizabeth's guide, the three best crystals for healing gut pain, go and check that out. That link is in the description. You can also catch her in a free consultation during the same or through the same link. Go and check that out in the description. If you'd like to connect with her in any other way, all of her social and website handles are on our on are on the description of this episode. Go and check those out. Um, again, Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining me. And thank you. I hope you're All having right. a great rest of your day. Thank you. All right, just a family. This has been your episode today. I'm your host, Melissa Kretschler. Please like, follow, and share the show on our multitude of social media platforms. We do need a little bit more love on TikTok to get us going live from there. So go and take a look. Like us. You can find us at Just Alive TV, just about across all of our social media platforms, or sign up for our newsletter at justalivetv.com. We are always looking for guest speakers, guest bloggers, or if you would like to see a topic featured, message us, send it our way. We are always looking for things to give you something to talk about because that's the title of the show. So let us know what you want to hear. We will have those discussions. Jump in the comments whenever you catch an episode. If you have an interesting idea or if you want to join in on that conversation, do so. Again, I'm your host, Melissa Kretschler. You can find me, link in the description. All right. I will see all of you on the next episode.